Patrick Montgomery was in court. Jonathan Manapa will stay in federal custody. No, I don't take responsibility at all. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. So there was some excitement in court today. A judge ordered a January 6th convict back to court today, and it ended up getting physical. There was a brawl. 34-year-old Vitaly Goschenkowski was ordered to appear in court. Uh, he was there to discuss messages that he's been sending to an officer who testified against him. In March, there was a jury trial for his actions at the U.S. Capitol. Gostjankowski had been convicted of six crimes. So he's been awaiting sentencing. He's been out on bond. Well, on October 17th, the prosecutor filed a motion and they asked the court to jail him until his formal sentencing. That was because of these messages and other things that he's been sending, that he's been posting online. The prosecutor noted that Gostjankowski has been posting intimidating messages online directed toward the FBI. Gostjankowski has been posting photos of buildings, they said vehicles, people, all associated with the FBI. And he's posting these things along with some concerning statements. In one Instagram post, Gostjankowski shared a photo of the FBI's Washington field office, and he wrote, quote, spotted them outside the Zionist FBI WFO. Most of them are murderous, perverted sociopaths. In another post, he questioned, quote, why is it so difficult to find a list of FBI agents' contact information on the Internet? You can easily find a cop's name and contact info with, within several minutes. So the prosecutor also said Goschenkowski had previously posted the name of an FBI agent online who was present when he was arrested. And then more recently, the situation escalated. Goschenkowski managed to obtain the cell phone number of an officer who was associated with his case. It was an officer who testified in his trial, and the officer had arranged for Goschenkowski's initial arrest. So Goschenkowski starts texting this officer, and he's also he also attempted to call him. Luckily, the officer didn't answer, but this was on October 14th and October 15th. So I'm not going to read the full messages, but Gostjankowski repeatedly mentioned that the officer is Jewish, and he said that the officer liked to be raped. He also denigrated the officer's personal appearance, and he said he was, quote, worse than a bunch of low-functioning ghetto N-words. Of course, he didn't say N-words. He actually used the heinous racist term. And the judge was also shown additional messages today in court. Of course, they contained more anti-Semitic, more homophobic language. One post referred to law enforcement as, quote, animalistic subhumans. And several others contained the names, email addresses, and phone numbers of prosecutors, law enforcement, and court staff. So, yeah, we've got another anti-Semitic, racist MAGA man trying to incite violence. I mean, what a shock, right? <laughs> anyway, I mean, I hate to laugh, but it's ridiculous how many of them there are. They're, they're like, I, I don't know, cockroaches. You just, you know, you get rid of one, there's 10 more that you don't see, and then they, they come out. Anyway, Goschenkowski appeared at the hearing today and his attorney tried to excuse his behavior. He said that, oh, he was just letting off steam because he thought his rights were violated when he was arrested. Yeah, so, well, in that case, no harm, no foul, right? And the attorney also tried to sell the idea that Goschenkowski's phone was compromised when the text messages were sent to the officer. He didn't come right out and say, oh, his phone was hacked because, you know, then he would have to prove it. But that's the impression he tried to give. 
Um, U.S. District Judge Paul Friedman was not buying this. So he revoked Goschenkowski's pre-sentencing release, and he ordered that he be taken into custody immediately. The judge said Goschenkowski's posts amounted to inciting behavior and, quote, all of this is extremely troubling. It's dangerous. It's putting others in danger, including prosecutors and law enforcement. I'm just stunned. And then the judge also noted the recent rise in general of threats against judges. And he mentioned how two of his colleagues had to get security detail. And the judge said, quote, I'm not detaining him for his First Amendment views. I'm detaining him for a lack of a better word for inciting violence. Well, Goschenkowski is deaf. So he had a, an ASL person on a monitor and the reporters say that he had a visible reaction when the interpreter was communicating the judge's decision. And then when the hearing ended, they said Goschenkowski started making like low moaning noises and then a marshal approached him to try to take him into custody and put the cuffs on him. And Gosh Jankowski flipped out. He physically resisted. So then other marshals and FBI agents who were in the courtroom rushed over and they tried to help. And then they're all scuffling. Things are getting knocked over. The reporters say that Gosh Jankowski is was much larger than some of the officers. He's like 6'3", and they said he's pretty muscular. And so they said he literally, he's trying to get to the courtroom door. He's trying to get out. He's like trying to run away. And he was dragging some of the officers along with him. So they're bumping into the defense table. They're knocking stuff over. Um, Gosh, Jankowski's attorney tries to help. He writes something on a legal notepad and he shows it to him. That didn't work. And the journalists say that the interpreter was just watching, you know, helplessly from the monitor. And then eventually the monitor got knocked over <laughs> during this fight. So the courtroom was cleared and then Gosh Jankowski was finally taken into custody. They literally had to pin him on the ground. Um, so they said nearly a dozen marshals and security officers had to intervene. So the prosecutors were later heard discussing whether or not they should collect statements from the officers about what all happened in this melee. And then reporters approached them and asked, hey, are you considering filing additional charges against him? And they just declined to answer. So he'll be awaiting sentencing from behind bars. Of course, he will get credit for this time served. Um, there is no scheduled date yet for the sentencing hearing. And the reason being is that Gosh Jankowski switched attorneys after he was found guilty in his trial. So I guess he's blaming the attorney instead of the, you know, abundant video evidence against him. So we'll see what happens, but I can't imagine that this made a good impression on the judge who's going to be sentencing him. <laughs> Not a smart move. Kind of glad it happened because then maybe he'll get a real sentence. All right. Thank you all so much for watching and listening. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you have not. Become a supporter if you possibly can. Love you all. Take care. Talk with you soon.